Room modes are one of the most talked about aspects in room acoustics, but there's a lot of confusion and misinformation out there about what room modes are and why they're important. Room modes are resonant frequencies that occur within a room that correspond to certain dimensions within that room. We often think about sound waves in terms of frequency, but we can also think about sound waves in terms of their size by referring to their wavelength. That's the distance from one peak of a wave to the other. So a one kilohertz sound wave would have about a wavelength of about 13 and a half inches. That means the distance between one peak and the other is about a foot and an inch. Lower frequencies have much longer wavelengths. If you work with sound or play an instrument, then you're probably already familiar with the way that physical volume affects sound. Instruments use strings and chambers of varying sizes to produce different frequencies. This is illustrated most clearly if you look at the size difference between a bass instrument and a treble instrument. In the exact same way, your room is going to act as a resonance chamber, but activate at specific frequencies depending on its size. Let's say you have a room that's about 20 feet long. This would correspond to a wavelength of about 56 Hz. So 56 Hz would be one of your room modes. If you want to feel for how this tone affects your room, simply play the corresponding tone over your speakers and move around the room to observe its effects. You notice the tone would be very strong on the back wall. As you move towards the center, it would get softer until it's almost gone completely. As you move towards the front of the room, the tone would come back as strong as it was before. This is all actually an example of an axial room mode. Axial room modes are the strongest of the three types of room modes and the ones we'll be focusing on. In a rectangular room, axial room modes are those frequencies and wavelengths that correspond to the three dimensions of a room. So a rectangular room will have three axial room modes bouncing between parallel walls. A tangential room mode will act across two dimensions, whereas a oblique room mode will act across three, and is the weakest of the three room modes. If you're working with a rectangular shaped room, it's actually very easy to get your room modes based off of your room's dimensions. There's even some useful tools online that let you punch in your room dimensions and get a complete breakdown of what frequencies will be an issue and where they'll be localized. These calculations are most useful if you're planning a room from scratch as you still have some flexibility in the room size. Using these calculations can actually be invaluable for getting you an acoustically optimized sound space to start with, but if you're working with an existing room, these calculations can still be very useful in planning your treatment strategy. Keep in mind that these room mode calculators only work if your room is rectangular in shape. Differences in building materials as well as window and door placement means that two rooms with the exact same dimensions might have slightly different room modes. It's also true that room modes and standing waves aren't the only issues you're going to run into when you go to treat your space. So, a room mode calculator is no substitute for measuring, listening, and testing a room yourself. As far as treatment is concerned, modal issues are often solved by a comprehensive bass strategy. Unless you're in a very tiny room, modal issues are going to occur in your deep bass frequencies, and having good deep bass response is simply a matter of having a lot of thick absorption in your room. The thicker the panel, the better it'll perform on those bottom two octaves. But keep in mind that coverage area is always the most important factor when you're dealing with any kind of treatment strategy. The monster and the soffit are going to be your best friends here, and adding range limiters to them can give them extra absorption under 80 Hz that can help clamp down on those modal issues. Targeting your bass traps onto hot spots such as corners often helps alleviate these modal issues as well, so target your bass traps when you can. Sometimes in order to solve a modal issue, you'll want to disrupt the reflections that are occurring on one of the walls that's creating the standing wave. So for an axial room mode that's working front to back, that would mean treating the front or rear wall with absorption. Keep in mind that axial room modes don't just occur between parallel walls, but also your floor and ceiling as well. And that's just your axial room modes. If you'd like to learn more about room modes, or just acoustics in general, visit us on our website where you can find tons of free articles and tools, as well as get free personalized advice tailored to your room. Get free acoustic advice. Visit GIKacoustics.com for educational articles and tutorials.